And now on to the building process. We'll start with the motor stick, extra hard balsa wood, and I cut it into strips with my bandsaw. <laughs> Okay, the next piece that has to go on there is the tail hook for the motor. I made that space across the top wider than the piece of wood is going to go on. And I did that on purpose. Uh, there's a fair amount of pressure on this, mo on this hook to slide forward. So what I've done is I put that on and then before we glue this onto the part, I put a slight notch in the... Um, wood and then the wire comes down and it pulls forward and it will tighten the thing up its, its hold on that piece of wood rather than letting it slide back and forth. Then I come back with another bend. And you can take care of that burr. Chinese uh, to make their life easy made this little wire that the propeller rides on out of really soft wire and we found that after the airplanes flew once or twice that wire would bend and then the prop wouldn't run straight. So I made a new motor shaft, propeller shaft for it. Gotta make sure you get it in from the right direction and <clears throat> when you put the propeller back on you got to get it the right way. One, this way it's got a little bit of a rounded nose and that goes on next and then the end of that gets bent over. What that does is when the propeller is unwinding it'll stop it and keep it from uh, windmilling which slows the airplane down. I start out with a piece 29 inches long I usually make these a dozen or two at a time. Uh, rubber uh, has to be protected from sunlight and ultraviolet, so uh, if you do something like this, just make sure that you keep it in the box. Put this little gold ring on the motor. Uh, we use a winder <coughs> for the youngsters to wind the motors, and it's hard to get a hold of this thing uh, and not have it get away from you. Uh, that ring helps to hold it. Another pair of Sears handy clamps. And I need to trim those little ends off. The next part <clears throat> we're going to make is the wing saddle. Six pieces of plywood, a little piece of spruce or basswood strip, a little bit of balsa wood in it. Uh, I've got a couple of pictures that I made that help that uh, can put that together. So to start out, we take one of these pieces and put it in that side, and one of these pieces and put it in this side, and then we cut a piece of basswood. And I put a little bit of an angle on that. Uh, it makes it easier to there's a rubber band that goes around the motor stick that holds this in position. That piece goes on there. Two more pieces go on top. This is a spacer that I put between the four pieces of plywood before I clamp it down. And when you do that, you want to make sure that you leave a space between your space piece there and that piece of wood so you don't glue them together. The next step is to take two of these little pieces and glue them in place. And they're laser cut accurately and the right length so they come down and touch this motor stick. Once, once that's dried, then the next step on that is to fill in the gap with soft balsa as I've done here. 
onto the trim tabs. As you can see, we've got a, some of them made ahead of time. This isn't very fussy, so I'm not going to worry too much about the length of it. The goal was to get that pinhole in the center of that piece of balsa wood. Like that. Get that wire as flat as you can back on that part. Now when that glue dries, I can trim the wire. You take this piece and you put it on there like that. As I said, there's only two places for an exacto knife in your hand or stuck in a piece of foam. So you make a cut like that and then You turn that around and you cut like that and now you have another gusset. Turn it over and put it on the styrofoam, not on the on the drawing, and take an X-Acto knife and again with their X-Acto knife things we do that for the kids and then go in and cut the material out of that slot because that goes on to the bottom of the motor stick. I found out that even though they've got that tape on there it'll still stick and a, a machine of scale is just about the right size to loosen them up and get them off without breaking them. It's important to get the break in that down in the V of this part. And this is the place where you need that. You can melt this covering with this thing, so you've got to do it with kind of sweeping it across it. 